This is NBC Nightly News with Jose Diaz Ballard. Good evening. Memorial Day weekend is getting off to an historic start. The TSA says it screened nearly 3 million people yesterday. That's a record. And on the roads, AAA says 38 million people are set to drive during this three day weekend. But the real curveball for half the country, it's the weather. 22 million people are under threat of strong tornadoes, damaging winds, and large hail across the heart of the country. But that number will double tomorrow. And as we come on the air, more than 4 million people are under tornado alerts from Texas to Kansas that could bring 80 mile per hour winds, even DVD sized hail. Our Priscilla Thompson starts us off in Oklahoma City, which could be in for a rough night. The Great American Getaway is in full swing tonight and shattering records. I think it's pretty packed for 5 a.m. TSA reporting its highest number of passengers ever screened in a single day Friday, almost 3 million across the U.S. And it's not just the skies that are jam-packed. Traffic has been really bad. It's backed up and it's taking us a long time to get there. According to AAA, more than 38 million are expected behind the wheel this holiday weekend. It's been really bad, honestly. Three cars on fire in here. This fiery crash inside a Boston tunnel sent drivers running out on foot, backing up traffic Friday just as some vacationers were leaving town. And the hottest destination for the 44 million traveling? Beaches. It's so nice to feel the sun on your skin. But it could be dangerously hot in places like Texas, where 7 million are under heat alerts, with temps expected to soar into the triple digits. And the outlook is not sunny everywhere. It's not a question of if we're going to see tornadoes, it's a question of when we're going to see tornadoes. 22 million from Texas to Illinois are in the bullseye for giant hail, high winds, and potentially deadly tornadoes. Whoa, man. Residents in Oklahoma still recovering from 26 reported tornadoes this month, including nine in the last week alone. Now bracing for more. It seems like we've had definitely some late nights, staying up, watching the radar for hours definitely. at a time. But, um, yeah, we're ready for it. Do you feel like tonight will be another one of those nights? I think so. A nationwide pattern of unrelenting spring storms, now proving to be a dark cloud as millions take to the roads and skies to kick off the unofficial start of summer. Priscilla joins me now from Oklahoma City. Priscilla, that region bracing for what could be a tough night. Yeah, Jose, we're already seeing significant storms in northwest Oklahoma with that system headed right this way. Already a tornado watch has been issued for this area, including Oklahoma City, as tonight residents remain on high alert. Jose? Priscilla Thompson in Oklahoma City, thank you. Let's get the latest forecast from NBC News meteorologist Angie Lastman. Angie, what's the rest of the weekend looking like? Jose, unfortunately, the severe weather threat doesn't let up through Monday. We've already got some of these thunderstorms firing up and leaving us with more intense storms targeting the central plains through the rest of the evening hours tonight. We've got all of the hazards on the table, especially concerned about those dangerous nocturnal tornadoes after dark. We know what kind of killers those are. Destructive hail up to five inches, and on top of that, the damaging wind gusts over 80 miles per hour. By tomorrow, it's the Ohio Valley in the Midwest that will watch for all of those same threats, specifically Nashville to Cincinnati and including St. Louis, with once again those really strong winds over 75 miles per hour. By Monday, Memorial Day, it's the East Coast that the risk arrives for. We'll see all of those strongest storms targeting the Mid-Atlantic as we get through the rest of the holiday weekend, Jose. Angie Lastman, thank you so much. And now to Pittsburgh and an emotional homecoming for an American tourist who was jailed in Turks and Caicos. Tonight, that release is raising hopes for other Americans who are still detained there. Marisa Parra has details. Ryan Hagerich is finally free to claim the hugs he's been waiting for. I feel like the weight of the world has been lifted off my shoulders. The Pennsylvania father of two reuniting with his family overnight after facing but avoiding 12 years in a Turks and Caicos jail. You think you're on this beautiful island, but there's nothing beautiful about it when you don't have your family. Hagerich spent three months unable to leave Turks and Caicos, which has a strict law surrounding firearms and ammunition, where getting caught with unauthorized possession carries a minimum 12-year sentence. Hagerich, on vacation in February with his family, said he accidentally left bullets in his luggage from a hunting trip. 
After Haygridge pleaded guilty, a local judge sentenced him to 52 weeks, 12 months suspended because of what she called exceptional circumstances, including the accidental nature and his lack of criminal background. It's the best day. U.S. lawmakers had flown down to Turks and Caicos earlier this week in support. And they played such a huge part in bringing me home, and hopefully the others are soon to follow. Three other Americans on the island awaiting their own fate on similar charges, including Sharita Greer and Ryan Watson, who say nothing was intentional. I was just so scared, like I was in shock, I couldn't believe it. You see beaches and sand and palm trees, and it's now become my prison. Hagerich, all too familiar, ordered to pay $6,700 for his own release amid what a family spokesperson says was a $100,000 financial toll. My biggest concern is coaching my kids' baseball games tomorrow, and that is such a relief. His return home, priceless. Marissa Parra, NBC News. In the Middle East, there has been a major setback on U.S. efforts to get aid into Gaza. Severe weather and choppy seas forcing four U.S. Army vessels to run ashore, with two anchored on a Gaza beach and the other two on Israel's coast. These vessels were supporting the mission to transport aid through a pier built by the U.S. military. We are back with President Biden's message to grads at the West Point Military Academy. President highlighting his commitment to Israel, Ukraine, and allies in the Indo Pacific region, telling more than a thousand graduating Army cadets that the military has never had to address so many global challenges at once. We are back with sad news for Disney fans after one of its main songwriters died today. Richard Sherman was 95 years old. He was half of the Sherman Brothers songwriting duo, best known for composing songs for movies like Mary Poppins and The Jungle Book. He won two Oscars, three Grammys, and had 24 gold and platinum albums. There's good news tonight. You know, so often the good news just doesn't get as much attention as the bad. So every Saturday we highlight the many people who spread joy and love. These are just some of those stories this week. We would like your help and helping a figure, Joe Well. Something special happened aboard a Frontier Airlines flight this week. Take a look. It's a graduation celebration for little Xavier Joel from Orlando, Florida. He had to miss his kindergarten commencement, so the crew marked the moment with photos and a walk down the aisle in his cap and gown. For his mom, Jay, well, that kindness had her heart sore. It was very emotional. Um, I, I, I felt so happy for him. That amount of kindness that was shown to him, you know, it, it restored my faith in humanity. There was a surprise, too, for graduate Malik Hurd at the University of West Georgia. Uh, Malik, a lot of people here this, this arena, but my special guest is shot up all the way from Kosovo. He gets his diploma, then stops in shock when he sees his military mom traveled more than 5,000 miles from her deployment in Kosovo just to make his day. And here's another military reunion that brought us to tears. That's 19-year-old Janio Chaka falling into the arms of his mom, Jacqueline. He's right there, he's Johnny just finished his grueling army basic combat training, the first in his family to enlist. <laughs> Mom and dad absolutely overwhelmed with joy and pride. And talk about teamwork. Ohio soccer superfans Haitham El Hodiri and Heidi Baxter were VIP guests at a recent Columbus crew game. Heidi honored for donating her kidney to High Thumb last year after he got sick and needed a transplant. They were total strangers until she heard about him from other Columbus Crew fans. The two even watched the game together in the hospital, sparking a friendship they say will last a lifetime. How do you thank someone like her? It's impossible to put into words. We hug a lot, <laughs> we cry a little, <laughs> but um, we're mostly really happy to see each other and I'm so grateful. The Columbus Crew family throwing them this party they will never forget. Does that change you in any way? 
it brings our community closer together. It's just that, I mean, again, it's hard to put in words, but that faith in humanity is through the roof. I've really come to consider that helping others with what we can is so important. There's no other word than overwhelming. Our community has really come to hold us, to embrace us through this journey. Heidi and Hytham say they're going to keep cheering on their Columbus crew team and hope to attend more games together in the future. That's NBC Nightly News for this Saturday. Hallie Jackson will be here tomorrow night. I'm Jose diaz Bullard. Thank you for the privilege of your time, and good night. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.